So we can't ignore it. If you can't beat it, you've got to join it. I am, of course, talking about artificial intelligence. Um, we had a brilliant, brilliant session on it um, on our training design festival. Um, and it only scratched the surface. So what I think we really need to do is to start looking at this and taking it seriously. Um, it's very much here to stay and it's not going to replace us at the moment, maybe five years from now, maybe 10 years from now it will. At the moment, it's not. Um, however, um, those training designers who harness this technology and get to use it um, with confidence, I think are going to have an advantage just as those who were able to adapt to the virtual training world when COVID hit had an advantage. Obviously, people have caught up now and I think it's going to be pretty much the same. So um, not as much as everybody, it has to be said. There are people in this group who are ahead of me, um, but I am getting my head into it now. And I thought what I would do is to just show you um, my working behind the scenes, if you like, because I think it's really important that we support each other and get to grips with this. So we are going to be having a an explore session um, on the last Friday of July. If you want to come in and just have a play with artificial intelligence, we can all have a look at the different tools that we're using, um, hear about any tips that we're having. So it's very informal, but it's if consider it a drop in with one topic of conversation. Um, that's probably the best way to do it. So we'll be doing that on the last Friday. But for now, what I want to do is just take five to 10 minutes to show you um, my learning, if you like. I'm sort of learning openly here um, and it would be interesting to see how that moves on in the next few weeks and how it compares to yours. So here's what I've been working on. It's just an example and I haven't got very far with it because I decided I was going to record it before I got too far down. Um, I thought of all my training design courses that I have, I don't have one on training means analysis. Um, so I thought I would see what ChatGPT comes up with if I asked it to design one. So you can see the question that I posed to it there. I'm designing a live virtual 60 minute training course to cover learning needs analysis. What topics should I include? Um, in our session at the Training Design Festival, um, Steve gave very specific parameters. He said he wanted seven lessons, um, but he's not a trainer and we are. Um, so we don't know how many lessons there are going to be. So I thought I would start off quite um, broad, asking it what topics should I include. So as you can see here, it starts off um, recapping really what I've asked it to do. And some of the topics you should consider, including introduction to learning needs analysis, the learning cycle, um, how to, well, conducting a learning needs analysis, and it's bullet pointed everything, tools and techniques, analyzing, prioritizing learning needs, presenting learning needs and analysis findings, which I think is actually quite good. I might not have thought of that myself, to be fair. Um, applying the learning needs analysis, um, best practices and Q&A. So there's a lot that it's suggesting there. So then um, I thought, OK, so there, there's the content. So a little bit of reverse engineering here. I decided to ask it what the learning objectives would be for this course. So what would be the mind of learning objectives? And it's come up with um, five there that it thinks we should be. So by the end of this course, um, delegates will be able to understand the concept and importance of learning needs analysis, learn how to conduct a learning needs analysis, analyze and prioritize learning needs, apply learning needs analysis findings and gain practical uh, knowledge and best practices. Um, so they sound reasonable to me. Um, might just tweak them a little bit, but they're all phrased in a way that I'm comfortable with. Um, and given the content that it suggests, they don't feel um, too too far off it, to be honest. Um, I think it's a big ask for an hour, um, but, you know, we're all guilty of that sometimes, aren't we? So then I decided to ask it to go back up to this whole chunk of um, content that it has created. Um, and I wanted to say, well, OK, let's just let's just go back up, because what I'm thinking is and anything you find on YouTube, I find people are getting really, really excited 
by AI generating lists. And this, this is basically what this is. This is just a list. Um, this is giving me a prompt of what I ought to cover, but that is all it is. It's, it's skin deep. There's no detail behind it. So I thought, well, can it do detail? So this is the next question that I asked it. Um, going back to the topics, expand on the first section and I have copied that over um, and asked what specific content should I cover? Um, so if we were using this to design a training course, I think we would have to go back to each topic and ask it to expand. Um, so it's done that a little bit. Explain. So it's giving us a little bit more meat for the bones here. But if I'm honest, it still feels a little bit, I don't know, surface deep. Oh, that's the wrong word. But I think what this is really showing me is that you still have to know your stuff. I mean, we've said this all along. These are really good prompts. If you can talk around these points, then this is brilliant. That is all you need. But if you don't know your content, if you don't know your subject, this is still not enough. Um, so this is what I'm saying. I think it is, it, on the one hand, it is brilliant, but equally we don't need to get too worried because it looks like it's designing a training course, but it isn't. Not really. Um, it's just providing those prompts and it's all still quite hollow, I think. I mean, here, touch upon any legal or regulatory requirements that the state conducting a learning needs analysis. You know, it doesn't know what they are. It's not telling you what they are. You're expected to know that. So, yes, it's good. It's giving us a really good outline, I think, but it's colour by numbers and you still have to be able to fit everything in yourself. And also it's still very content related and everything I've found on YouTube so far assumes a video based course or an e-learning style course, not a live course, which is what most of us um, design, of course. So I thought I would then ask it um, to highlight the importance of this to learners. Can you give me an example um, of when a good learning needs analysis. So I thought, let's see if it can come up with specific examples that we could talk about to give us this meat on the bones. And it has come up with um, a theoretical example. So, you know, it's fine and all the rest of it, but I like to include real life examples so we can talk about, you know, business X or business Y, and this is what happened. This still feels very fictional, I suppose. It's all still very theoretical. Um, it doesn't give you specifics. Um, it's still all linking to what should happen in principle, I suppose. So then I asked it, um, I'd like to include some interaction in the second part. Please let me suggest how I can do that. Um, and then I copied in that section again to remind it what it was. Um, and it's given me some ideas, which I thought was quite good. Um, it isn't writing the exercises for me. It's saying I could do a poll or a quiz. Um, what methods have you come across before? Um, true or false? It's saying I could create some case studies. I still have to create those case studies. Um, it's suggesting that I could do a role play. Now, what AI doesn't understand is that role plays are time consuming. So in a one hour session, I'm probably not going to be doing role playing at this time. Um, we might do something a little bit later on, or if we are going to be role playing, it's going to be incredibly short, um, linking to asking specific questions. Um, and it's also um, said, yes, we can have a discussion, give us some ideas as to what that might be. So the advantages and disadvantages of various data gathering methods, you could definitely work that up into something. Um, to get them to share their own examples. So this is where you need to know your audience. Um, and why I think at the moment for what we do, designing live sessions, we don't need to worry just yet. But what we do need to do is learn how to use this tool because 
Um, hopefully that's just giving you an idea of the fact that we need to, um, it's like design thinking. We have to start broad and we have to narrow it down. Um, then we have to broaden it out again and then we have to narrow it down again. So we have to know what we want. We have to know which bits to pick up on. We have to um, know which bits to probe a little bit further. We have to um, know which bits um, to get it to redo as well. I mean, not in this example, but when I've been writing blogs, um, I've asked it to rewrite in a different style, for example. So you're not out of a job is what I'm saying, but we do need to learn to use this stuff. So let's, I'd love to know how this is comparing to your experience, what else you found. I know that some of you are using Canva um, more than ChatGPT. Um, I know that we're all using it in different ways. So I just think it would be a really interesting session on the, I think it's the 28th of July. It's the last Friday anyway, to just come and have a play and let's work together maybe in small groups. Let's see how it's going to work for us um, and challenge each other and test it out and see how we're going to be able to use this to make our training design quicker, easier and less stressful.